rather than a, a constricted battlefield with large numbers of troops inside of it, which is the essence of mass infantry warfare. We now have a battlefield dispersed over deserts, third world, slum cities, and jungles, where there are very few combatants inside it, and it's small numbers of men hunting down other small numbers of men. We no longer have an enemy that wears uniforms. We don't have an enemy that uh, has a state capital. We don't even have an enemy that has a state. That makes it very difficult to determine who the enemy is sometimes. Stop right here. Right now, young Marines have to deal with insurgents who are essentially doing uh, warfare without any rules at all. And that young Marine has to deal with an insurgent on the street, and at the same time, he's going to have to deal with somebody's grandmother on the other side of the street. Do you want someone to look at this? Yes, yes. It's much more demanding, I would say, on the battlefield today. It takes a much more intelligent, sophisticated individual to be successful on the battlefield today. We must go. The Marine Corps pushes battlefield authority down to the lowest levels. More than other services, the Marine Corps places a premium on decentralized decision making. Nearly half of all Marines are in the three lowest ranks. I think we've always done that in the Marine Corps. Uh, we call it the strategic corporal. Um, you have to push down the leadership to the lowest level. We stress leadership. We teach them leadership. We show them leadership. We show them what it's like to be a leader. And then, uh, really, you give them some guidance and you turn them loose. Um, and it works for us. The Marines today, even down at the Lance Corporal, Corporal level, are making decisions that affect the nation when they're out there guarding street quarter in Baghdad or delivering supplies to humanitarian relief in the Philippines. Their actions will have a, a huge impact on the way America is perceived around the world. The Marine Corps has a generally positive image and reputation, both in this country and around the world. Marines are fond of one of their own general's description, that there is no better friend, no worse enemy than a United States Marine. But on occasion, the image has been tarnished, often because of the Marines' aggressive tradition and tactics. Marines bring their own warrior ethos of uncompromising toughness to the battlefield, often producing brutal confrontations and severe results. You're asking people for a level of perfection inside a maelstrom of confusion that has to be experienced to be believed. The Marines do a great job, but they need to be better at it even. 99% is not good enough. Marine Corps is saying, you know, you have an ideal. There is a code and a level of potential that all Marines should be striving for. By far, most of them don't get to the ideal, but they get closer to their potential, I think, than, than most people give them credit for. Order is about monopolizing the use of force. You can't have freedom, democracy, etc., until somebody monopolizes the use of force um, and stems a region from anarchy. And for that, you're going to need people like United States Marines, um, who do have a very strong moral sensibility as they use force. It very much comes down to the training. And the more you train and the more you view it as a professional army that's not about just killing the enemy out of vengeance, the better you are at having an organized troop that's responsible, accountable, and that carries out the mission with just conduct. So you have to have discipline. You have to have a young Marine that understands right and wrong, that understands that killing isn't natural. The fact that we have a code of conduct, a Western ethic that says, quite frankly, don't kill nothing that don't need killing. Marines understand that what they do is a brutal business, but they never lose their humanity. There's a lot of extraordinary circumstances being thrown at them, and they're adapting. World War II was the greatest generation, but they were ordinary men in extraordinary times that rose up to meet the challenge. And that's what the young Marines are facing today. They're being put in extraordinary times, and the best of them is coming out and rising to the top. They're making those decisions, and a lot of them are making the right decision at the right time. Yes, sir. Before it comes to anything physical, it's all got to be mental, right? Yes, sir. One of the things they teach you in boot camp is do the right yes, thing even when nobody's looking. Yes, sir. And it's a very good cast of mind to have. It's very good training. And so it tells the 
corporal on the street corner, even if you think you could be abusive, even if you think nobody's looking, don't. Do the right thing. We start by really focusing on our traditions, and that's the tradition of success. And uh, that builds on a, on a tradition that goes all the way back to the founding of this nation. And uh, that does, in fact, give you some strength on the battlefield. You don't want to embarrass the institution, and you certainly don't want to let down your fellow Marines. Move, move, move. Hey, give me my Marines. And that's a close-knit relationship that you have on a battlefield, and your life may very well depend on the guy that's standing to your left and right. And it's very important that you have that bond with them. And that allows us to be very, very successful in some very, very difficult situations. I don't think any media can truly capture um, the impact and experience of war, of combat, close combat. Where you can see the enemy and you can see where your bullets are striking the enemy. And you can see your men falling either side of you. I don't think you can sense or convey the smells, the sickly sweet uh, smell of decomposing flesh of somebody who's buried under a pile of rubble or a bomb crater. I don't think you can deal or convey the misery of, of people caught in this mess. War is nasty. Seeing uh, young men and women blown away is nasty. If we never had to go to war, boy, wouldn't it be wonderful? And wouldn't we have, uh, you know, served our purpose as, uh, you know, as warriors in waiting but didn't have to go? But the fact is, it's not the way the world is. Anyone who's been on the battlefield does not want to go to war. Uh, it's not glamorous at all. Uh, it's very dangerous. Uh, it's very difficult. It's very dirty. It's not a good place to be. There was absolutely no glamour of any sort in combat, none. No, I can't see anything glamorous or anything that would make anyone want to engage in combat. It's sheer hell on earth. We never train our people that they're going to enjoy combat or that it's glamorous. So much of the Marine Corps training doesn't necessarily play well in the public eye because people don't really like to know what the Marine Corps is training to do, what the Marine Corps' job is. We do teach them to quickly locate, close with, and destroy the enemy. The Marine generals are the only generals who actually talk about killing. They will say, this organization is about killing. That's what we do. Here's the dilemma. A liberal society still needs to be defended. And it needs to be defended violently at times. And the people who are going to do this have to like what they do, or else they're not going to be very good at it. It's not really going to matter if it goes up to higher. They may morally, abstractly not like to kill, but the actual training and doing is not something that they can be afraid of. The fact of the matter is, throughout history, at times, killing is necessary. It's not a matter of good or bad. There are situations in which this hard thing has to be done. 